do need to be butch for this one because it's scary. We are in a recession, Professor Dr. Adrian Saville, Chief Executive at Canon Asset Managers, also Professor Ed Gibbs. The big five things we need to know about coping with a recession. We've had so much practice with recessions. I mean, on average, we've had a recession every four years in South Africa for the last 40 years, Adrian Saville. Yeah, give or take, if you take the, the what they're calling now a technical recession, um, and a technical recession, according to economics textbooks, is that you must have uh, two quarters in a row with uh, with negative growth, and then technically you're in a recession. Okay, so um, that's technically you're in a recession, which I'm calling yeah. a recession. What is a recession if it's not technically a recession? <laughs> so my complaint uh, about this technical recession is that uh, the... Per capita growth uh, uh, in South Africa is the real barometer. Um, and what I mean by that is if the population is growing at uh, 1.5% and the economy is growing at 0%, then uh, the technical recession wouldn't be recorded because it's 0% growth. But actually, on a per-person basis, you're going backwards. Yeah, on average, uh, so every single person in South Africa becomes poorer because the economy is not growing and we're throwing more people into the system. Correct. And the the headlines uh, of today and yesterday capture this story of technical recession, saying that we've had two quarters uh, in a row now of negative growth. But the reality is on a per-person basis, we've been in recession for the better part of a decade. That's a, a reality with which we need to grapple. Um, what happened to the 3% growth rate? It was all meant to be going along swimmingly by now, wasn't it? We've yeah. had nine months of Rama, pick, your, pick, pick the second half of that. The euphoria has um, unfortunately evaporated quickly. And there was, a, you know, there was a very strong sense at the end of last year that we could be rewarded with uh, after a bit of uh, sort of um, – Gathering our uh, gathering our stance and getting our balance right, that uh, we could be rewarded with reasonable recovery through the course of uh, 2018. But those plans have been put paid to, uh, and I would venture that you know while some of it uh, might be attributed to South Africa, uh, expropriation without compensation is an obvious uh, uh, aspect to point to. I, I would venture that most of it is explained by external factors and. Uh, the real killjoys here are the goings-on in uh, in Turkey and Argentina. Um, yeah, I mean, Turkey, we've known for a, for a while, is a mess. Argentina is sort of playing catch-up on the bad news front. But if we were more resilient, if we were more uh, economically fit, if we didn't have the huge uh, problems with state-owned enterprises, if we didn't have the massive unemployment rate, if we didn't have the huge increases in taxation to cope with state capture, we would not be reacting in the same sort of way, would we, um, to the fact that... Uh, the economy is going backwards. I think that's fair, Bruce. Um, South Africa belongs to, I think it was Morgan Stanley who coined the term the Fragile Five. And the Fragile Five referred to uh, Turkey, most obviously, uh, India, Indonesia, Brazil, South Africa are included in that, uh, in that makeup. And the suggestion is that uh, these economies have a, a set of common attributes that leave us structurally fragile, and the most common attributes are that we uh, run the so-called twin deficits, and the twin deficits are budget deficits and current account deficits, and that our growth is uh, externally driven. In other words, we are outward-looking economies which leave us uh, the consequences rather than causes of our own economic progress. And um, where, we, where we look for relief uh, uh, in resolving those twin deficits, the, the relief comes from outside, uh, which means we have to look to foreigners to fund, uh, for instance, our current account deficit and indeed our, uh, our, our budget deficit. So South Africa sits as one of the members of the so-called uh, Fragile Five, and uh, that means when it comes to uh, an emerging market wobble, we are one of the first to get caught up in, uh, in the storm. Can the RAND save us? I mean, there's lots of gnashing of teeth and renting of clothes and pouring of ashes over our heads as the RAND capitulates and slides to weaker than 20 to the pound today. But that's supposed to be the great mm. shock absorber, isn't it? It's, 
It's intended to be, and th- there's a duality here because on the one hand, the RAND could certainly help in the near term act as a buffer. Most obviously, it assists the uh, the commodity components of the economy. Uh, but South Africa is also a, a big importer, so whilst we might get some export uh, boost, which would help growth, we quickly uh, get that export boost, re- boost replaced by import inflation. And on, whilst all of this is going on, the RAND is being used uh, really as a proxy for emerging markets. Uh, in fact, something I've just tweeted to you a few minutes ago shows you that, uh, and it's a number that you're familiar with from uh, earlier shows we've, we've spoken about this, 15 to 20 percent of the South African re- uh, economy is traded in the RAND market every day. Sure. So our chance of managing the RAND or getting it to a, an appropriate level, uh, a, a sort of a Goldilocks level or a just right level, really doesn't sit with us. Um, the RAND is determined externally as much as much of the, the goings on in, in, in the JSE, the bond market, and the RAND dollar market are being determined externally rather than internally. Rule number one of getting out of a hole is that you stop digging and then you work out a plan after that. South Africa, unfortunately, is deep in a hole and we are still digging. How do we get out of the hole? I think this is an aspect that I've raised um, on, in, in many of our conversations. South Africa has uh, an investment drought. It's been the case for the better part of the last decade. It, it's all good and well to talk about you know, a consumer recovery or perhaps even a fiscal boost, but neither of those is really sustainable and neither drives production, employment, competitiveness. It's the supply side of the economy, the production side of the economy that we have to look to. And there's there's two components there that could potentially uh, really get us into our stride. And the first is unlocking the investment vault. And here that we really do sit on a on a hidden treasure, uh, represented amongst other things by the the basket of cash that JSC listed companies sit on, the better part of a trillion rand uh, in cash. Uh, and uh, then the, the, the ability to uh, drive exports. And the most obvious uh, export destination is our, our very fast-growing neighborhood where uh, many of our neighbors are in good strides, strong growth, and uh, are willing buyers of our products and services. Um, so there is, uh, without question, the capacity to turn this recession into a recovery and in getting that recovery in place, turning it into structural and sustainable growth. But that's about, as you point out, certainty and stability in in the stride. My thanks to Dr. Adrian Saville, Chief Executive at Canon Asset Managers.